Welcome to worship. Give thanks to God. We thank God for joy, for laughter, for abundant blessings of every kind. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything. We thank God when we can and as we can for struggles, for solitude, for fears. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God that in Christ, our joys as well as our pain, our losses as well as our laughter are in God's heart and hands. Amen. The scripture reading for today comes from the Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power, put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, Take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, 
Keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. Evil. Evil is real. Simone Weil, a 20th century French philosopher and Christian mystic, said that imaginary evil is romantic and varied. Real evil is gloomy, monotonous, barren, boring. Imaginary good is boring. Real good is always new, marvelous, intoxicating. Evil, the idea of it, exerts a pull over everyone. Now, most of us are not tempted by extreme evil, such as acts of extreme cruelty up to and including murder. The evil that most of us commit is not big or dramatic. Everyday evil flows from things like ignorance, carelessness, selfishness, and pettiness. The bad things that most of us do most of the time tend to be minor sins. Sometimes they're even just sins of omission, things we should have done that we didn't do. But a lot of small sins can add up to more than we think. You've heard the expression, death by a thousand cuts? That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's the nature of sin in our lives. Paul suggests that it's possible to protect ourselves from our own temptation to sin by putting on a metaphorical suit of armor, what he calls the armor of God. The elements of faith that Paul says will protect us are truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and the Spirit. So let's go through them. What is truth? There are several meanings for the word truth. In this case, I don't think it is about facts or about being honest, but specifically about what Christians believe as the capital T truth about our relationship to God through Jesus Christ. Over the centuries, many Christian thinkers have given their thoughts about the importance of truth to our faith. In difficult times and situations, reminding ourselves of significant truths that we cling to can provide us with the strength that we need to stay on the path that we believe is right. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. This is why right, temporarily defeated, is stronger than evil, triumphant. Next is righteousness. This isn't self-righteousness, the act of proclaiming one's own rightness. No, this is actual righteousness, which comes not from loudly announcing one's own moral superiority at every opportunity, but rather by quietly doing the right thing consistently, day in and day out. The next quality is peace. It may seem weird to have peace as a component of armor. But, of course, this is not real armor. It is metaphorical armor. The early church is a nonviolent organization, but there is more to peace than just nonviolence. Next is faith. The word that is used in the original text is pistis. Actually, the form is pistios. In most translations, it is rendered as faith, but instead it should probably be called vow to faithful relationship. That's a better way to understand it. It's probably a better way to know how they understood it in the early church. 
It could just be rendered as vow or pledge, and it stems from the idea of covenant loyalty. Therefore, it's probably best linked to a covenant, something like a wedding vow or like when you pledge allegiance. Faithful relationship or covenant loyalty could be added for emphasis and further clarification, which would help us to understand what is meant by faith here. Next is salvation. The Greek word used in this passage is soteria. Soteria is a broader term in Greek than we often think of in English. Other concepts inherent in soteria include restoration to a state of safety, soundness, health, and well-being, as well as preservation from danger of destruction. The final part of the armor is the Holy Spirit. The other parts of the metaphorical armor of God are personal qualities that Christians are supposed to cultivate. But the Holy Spirit is actually an aspect of God. This concept, a sword of the Spirit, is interesting. This is the only place that this expression is found within Scripture. A sword is something that an individual wields and controls. And, unlike the other parts of the armor, it is not merely protective it can also be used as a kind of weapon to actively attack sin and temptation. It implies a special kind of partnership between us as Christians and God. God works with us and through us when we put on the whole armor of God. Some of the reasons that Christians need protection from the temptation to sin have changed since the time that this letter was written. First century Christians had to go against the grain of society, what Paul refers to as this present darkness. In some cases, they were going against the grain of their families by being part of the church. And this was true whether they came from a Jewish or a Gentile background. They faced potential persecution by the state, which Paul seemed to indicate was not the main reason that one needed armor. One needed armor so that one's faith would be big enough and strong enough to deal with the reality of this persecution. The temptation to let go of faith under pressure is constant. Modern life provides different challenges to our faith. Our lives are very full and overwhelming, and in many cases difficult. I think if I were to refer to this time as this present darkness, many people would agree that that description is just as fitting as our time, although probably for different reasons than they thought during Paul's time. Christians are no longer forced to face persecutions such as lions in a coliseum, but our bodies and our minds experience emotional stress in the same way as they experience physical dangers such as persecution. The bottom line is we still need the protection that our faith and relationship with God can provide for the problems and the dangers that we face in our daily lives. May we, as modern Christians, value the full armor of God as we fight the battles in our lives. And now let us join together in prayer, beginning with a time of silent prayer.
God, our lives can be so difficult. And at one time or another, all of us struggle. We struggle with illness. We struggle with loss. We struggle with sadness. We struggle with a feeling of powerlessness. We struggle with indecision. We have so many pressures and struggles and difficulties in our modern lives. God be with us. Teach us to put on the full armor of God and to allow you to work through us and with us to fight the battles that we must fight, to face the challenges we must face. Help us to help one another so that all of us may be armored as we need to be at all times. In Christ's name we offer this prayer, amen. And now with the confidence that comes from being children of God, let us join together in the prayer our Savior taught saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. You're my Savior.
May God protect you through your time of trial. May the love of Christ, seen in what he did and heard in what he said, fill you with joy and hope. May the Holy Spirit advocate for you, leading into all truth, lighting the way of faith, and strengthening you to follow Jesus so that you will become like a strong young tree growing deep and bearing much fruit. Amen.